2023. Definitely one of the years of all time. But if we're talking video games, it was pretty epic. Here's the Kingdom, Karmazoo, Dave the Diver, Gumbrella, Viewfinder, Cocoon, Venba, Bread and Fred, Hi-Fi Rush, Baldur's Gate, Alien Hominid Invasion, RoboQuest, Lethal Company, God dang Crab Champions. The amount of great games that came out this year is insane, and I haven't even properly played half of these. All right, let's get into the list. Oh, I'm glad I missed. I'll get him next time. Beam attack! Last year, I said that Kirby and the Forgotten Land was my favorite game of 2022, and I am glad to say that the Pink Boy has done it yet again with another great game. This time, it's the remake of the Wii game, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. And like, come on, I'm a Kirby fanatic. You knew it was gonna be on this list. This game is just as fun as the original and has enough new stuff to stand out on its own, like the new copy abilities or Mary Magdalene, the collection of mini games. The multiplayer in this game is also super fun. I played most of the game with my family and it was an absolute blast. Very fun game, I highly recommend it if you like Kirby games even a little bit. But before we move on, it's time for me to do a shameless plug and tell you to subscribe. You should subscribe! That's right, you should subscribe! My upload schedule literally doesn't exist. I post like th every three days for like five years and then I stop posting for like two weeks. Uh, so your notifications aren't going to be filled in. Am I, I'm actually using this as a, as a selling point. If you subscribe, something special might happen. Like I might actually start posting sooner, or I might get a better microphone because this one sucks. I like who who knows? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Two male kangaroos, boomers they're called, fighting for dominance or fun in a suburban setting north of Sydney, Australia. Party Animals is a game where you play as an animal of your choice and beat up other animals. Y yes, that's the whole game. It's a modern successor to the game Gang Beast, however it pretty much excels to edit in basically every way possible. There's weapons now, the movement's way more fluid, there's more maps, more variety in the maps, and yeah, it's just way better in every way. Honestly, this game is just really funny, especially with a group of friends. It's the perfect casual game to play with friends and family, or just by yourself online. Grab it! Grab the thing! Grab it! Grab the, the boat! Ah! No! I wasn't paying attention! Geometry Dash! Alright, I know what you're thinking. Erm, the funny cube game didn't come out this year, you absolute moronic buffoon. Alright, Nerdface, you know what? L plus ratio plus didn't ask plus your mom. Get the hell out of here. Nobody likes you. Okay, I can finally do the video now. Okay, uh, um. Oh, yeah, Geometry Dash 2.2 finally came out. The, the, we've been waiting for this for like seven years. Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, it's pretty fun. There's a bunch of new levels and uh, icons and a new game mode and editor stuff, which I don't know how to use. And, uh, yeah, Geometry Dash. I like Geometry Dash. Cool. I have no idea what to do for this transition, so uh, here's the bonk sound effect. This year, I decided to try out Risk of Rain 2, so I bought it and started playing it, and I had a lot of fun. I formed an addiction. Since I was playing so much Risk of Rain 2 with my friends, I realized, hey, they're making a remake of the first game. Maybe I should get it. After all, I do have a, almost 100 hours in this game, so I bought it, and this game is almost as good as 2. You got a bunch of different characters, and all of them are unique and very well balanced. Okay, most of them. After you pick your character, go into the wild and fight a ton of enemies. W why is there so many of them? Please help. This game is a ton of fun, especially with friends, and I highly recommend it if you like Risk of Rain 2 or just roguelikes in general. Well, if he gets to eat poop in a ball, I wanna eat poop in a ball! Nobody's eating poop in a ball! Ah, no, 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 no. You are not invading my list twice. You already did it last year. You don't get to do it again. Respond. Hello? Uh... So they updated the game and basically fixed everything I said was wrong with it. Good job, massive monster. It is insane how much they added in this update. They added relics, giving you a third attack option, secondary strong attacks for all the weapons, an entire post game where you have to beat the four areas of the game again but with harder difficulty, new decorations, a kitchen, shared shelters. Oh my god, this is the best feature of the update. I've made so many of these, they're awesome. A photographer mode, new follower types, more fun encounters with the other characters. There is so much in this update. I have no idea how the people at Massive Monster did it, but they somehow perfected this game. And they're doing another update! and it's already almost done you guys are insane uh, growing up man i spent hours of my life stomping 
Koopas. Hey look, it's the best performing video series on my channel, isn't that something? I'm pretty sure everybody expected this one to be on the list, but yeah, Mario Wonder is incredible. I'm one of the few weirdos who likes 2D Mario more than 3D, so this game was just perfect for me. The level design in this game is amazing, and almost every single enemy is brand new to the series, and that basically describes this entire game. New. The game introduces so many new creative ideas, plus the addition of the wonder effects makes it such a joy to play. Wait, why does this one have new in the title? You know what, Nintendo? I changed my mind. 0 out of 10, a garbage game for false advertising and a, and a, a bad title. <laughs> This year, Nintendo released Pikmin 4 after a decade-long wait for a new Pikmin game, and it is an experience like no other. I was introduced to the series with Pikmin 3, and the port is probably one of my top 10 Switch games. This game has elements of all three of the other Pikmin games, feeling like a celebration of the series as a whole, but still adding enough new things for new players to enjoy, and for old players alike. They brought back the caves from Pikmin 2. They brought back all the old Pikmin from the last games. It really just feels like a love letter to the series, and I love it. Well, except for the fact that they totally ruined the pointer controls, but uh, we don't need to focus on that. that. That's not important right now. I'm sure that most of you guys who already were watching my videos thought that Mario Wonder or Pikmin 4 was going to be at number 1, but I am 100% sincere about this and I think that Pizza Tower is easily the number 1 game of this year. The gameplay in this Wario Land successor is some of the most fluid movement I've ever played in any game ever. Then you have the level design, which is designed so meticulously so that they can be dashed through in a matter of minutes, which is one of the main gimmicks of the game. Speed. Each and every one of the 20 levels also has a unique power-up or gimmick to keep it feeling fresh and different from the other levels so they don't all blend in together. But that's not the end of it, because at the end of every single level, there's a giant pillar named John Pillar, who if you hit him, you have to dash through the level backwards this time and all the way back to the entrance so that you can escape. It is so much fun, and you'll have adrenaline pulsing through your veins every single time you hit that pillar and start pizza time, even if it's your second or third time playing the level. And then... Just as a cherry on top, you got those P ranks. The credentials in order to get a P rank on a level is to never lose your combo throughout that whole level, do a second lap of the escape sequence, get enough points to garner an S rank, and find all the secret rooms and the secret treasure. It is a lot of things, and also really hard to do, but it just makes it all the more merrier when you finally get the P rank and scream in excitement. And those are my favorite games of 2023. I think this is one of the best years of gaming that we've ever had in a while. If you have some spare change lying around, I highly recommend looking into any of the games that you're even slightly interested in. And don't stop at just AAA games. Indie games deserve the love as well. I just named off a ton at the beginning of the video. Maybe even try out some older games or revisit some that you've already played. I can name a few ports and remakes that have come out this year. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video, and have a nice 2024. What's up guys, it's me, Admiral Axelotl here. Don't trust my voice, I'm just a little bit sick when recording this, my bad, my bad. But, I forgot, I, I did a little bit of editing mistakes and just like, voice mistakes, but the number one game was meant to be honorable mentions, but, I'm gonna have to give you the best game of the year now. Please, drum roll. Garden of Bandan, I said it, it's the best game of the year. The game is so peak. Roblox Parkour, the game design is just, ooh, it's just perfect. It's perfect. Chef's Kiss, don't even get me started on the art style, art design. It's so quality. Free Unity assets, mm, mm, mm. 280,000 polygons on the remote. It's perfect. Like, don't even get me started on Jumbo Josh. Oh, oh, he's got- Oh god, oh god. No, 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 no,